Hello, hello, and welcome. Ooh, mute. <laughs> we'll get started in just a couple of minutes. I actually have the date here now in front of me. So today is Thursday, April 16th. And you are joining a Jana Marie Foundation wellness break. We're going to do a little paint along. These are our materials. This is what we're going to be doing today. This is a really fun one. We're going to be practicing something called um, a wash technique or just using using a wash. Um, so this is great for acrylics or watercolors. You can follow along with crayons or colored pencils, markers, and then a nice sharpie for that black will, will be really cool and fun. So um, if you're following along with me, I've got my canvas ready. I have white, black, red, yellow, and blue paint. I'm using acrylics. This is my paper plate that <laughs> is slowly becoming more acrylic than paper. We're definitely going to need um, some clean water for this one for our wash and some paint brushes, some paper towel. I'll have to grab my paper towel, but I'll be I'll be back in a second. I need to go get my myself some paper towels. So if you need to get yourself set up, get all your materials, grab a snack and we'll get ready to paint in just a couple minutes. Hey Nikki and Anya. <laughs> As we're sitting here waiting, I'm watching my cat um, stare at this red squirrel. <laughs> and both the cat and the squirrel are twitching their tails. It's it's really cute. So I hope everyone's doing well on this Thursday afternoon, taking the time for a, a nice wellness break at the Jana Marie Foundation Facebook page. It's an honor to, to be able to do these with them every week. Only Anya. Well, hi, Anya. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I hope you're doing well. I hope everybody's doing well these days. I think this is our uh, fifth week of, uh, at least uh, for me, it's my fifth week of remote instruction. I work at Penn State. I think it's our fifth week. I don't know. Somebody can tell me. But um, I think this is our fifth week of painting anyway, of doing um, Facebook Live videos. So I've been here every Thursday with, with Jana Marie Foundation on Tuesdays. You can find me on my Paint with Jackie. I'm wondering if there's anybody anybody here watching. This is your first time. First time watching on the Jana Marie Foundation page. Well, welcome back if you've been here before. I'm glad you're painting with me. I don't know about you, but I'm in State College and hi Joy, I'm so glad you're here. 
Um, I'm in State College, Pennsylvania, and we we had snow today. So I don't know if anybody else saw that snow. Um, so it's been it's been pretty chilly here today, and I think it's going to get colder tonight, from what I hear. But that doesn't matter because we are here, and we are. Yay, Lisa! She's been here before, right? I think. Oh, well, welcome, Donna. Thanks for being here. Oh, I love your little lamb and daffodil picture. <laughs> I, I love daffodils. So, oh, that's really sweet. Thanks for being here, Donna. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go through step by step here with this this little painting. I mentioned earlier that this is great to do with um, acrylics or even watercolors will work. But markers, crayons, whatever you got in the house, we're, we can make it work today okay um so yeah if it's your first time here this is the the Jana Marie foundation page they do great work in the state college pennsylvania the center county area in terms of reaching out to young folks and promoting well-being and raising mental health awareness so um it's an honor to to help them out and do these little wellness breaks if if you can um as a little thank you to them you can check out their their actual webpage janamariefoundation.org and there's a way for you to donate if you're if you can if you're able right now we know things are a little bit difficult for everyone but send them a couple of dollars as a as a thank you to them for doing these these wellness breaks and they've been doing a ton of programming um yoga and mindfulness breaks and um just a lot of great stuff going on on the Jana Marie Foundation page so we thank you very much for being here artists and we thank the Jana Marie Foundation for all the amazing work that they do so um let's get going let's get started here so i've got my hey Jeanette hey Roberta um, we've got our, uh, I got my canvas here, and what we're going to do is we're, we're going to give ourselves a base to start adding um, a wash, and a wash is just a really, really watered down color, okay? And um, our base is just going to be yellow. You might be able to tell, or maybe not, that underneath all of this butterfly and the flowers and everything is just a coat of yellow. So that's what I'm going to do first. Really simple. We're going to start out nice and easy. It's kind of a nice, nice little therapy to just cover, just cover a canvas with some paint, right? Because we don't, we can't make mistakes now. We have plenty of opportunity to make mistakes later. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but not really. No. This is fun. This is the fun, easy part. We're just covering our canvas in yellow paint here. And because we want this to dry, um, I don't have to go crazy here, right? I'm, I'm just covering the canvas with color and I'm gonna move that paint around as much as possible because I don't need any big glops. I don't need a thick layer. I don't need any big old globs of paint. I'm just covering this bad boy with some yellow. And I'm going to want that to, to dry. So we're just spreading this around. And you'll definitely be able to tell if I haven't washed my brushes thoroughly. <laughs> Some gray might be popping out, but that's okay. By the way, there are, there are no mistakes, right? Only happy accidents, just like Bob Ross said. The kind, wise Bob Ross that has taught, who has taught me everything I know. So again, if you're just joining us, welcome. First of all, thanks for being here, painting together on a, on a Thursday afternoon. If you're just joining us, we are giving our canvas a nice coat of yellow paint, just, just enough to cover our canvas in that color. We're not going crazy with big old glops. We're not blending anything, so we don't need to keep it wet. So a lot of, if you've painted with me before, um, 
when we're ready to blend colors together, I want to keep it thick and wet so we can blend our next paint in, but we're not doing that today. We, we're going to do something else. Um, we're going to be using a wash technique. So we want this base to be dry. Hi, Cheryl. I have um, posted this already in my Paint with Jackie Facebook page, but if you or anyone you know um, wants to paint along but can't do it at this time, or you know someone who's not on Facebook, um, I've started to upload these videos on a YouTube playlist, um, a public YouTube playlist, so um, I can share that link in the comments um, at the end. And what I've been doing is I've been becoming very tech savvy these days. And I learned that it's just super easy to um, take a Facebook video link and download it. And then I can just pop it on a, a YouTube playlist. Hi, Michelle. Welcome. So I will, um, I will share that, that YouTube playlist link at the end in the comments. And uh, so that that link is, you know, public. You don't need Facebook to access it. And you can just kind of check out all the paintings we've been doing over these these weeks, uh, these weeks at home. All right. So, yeah, I did. I should pat myself on the back. I did a really good job of keeping that pretty thin. So it's drying fairly quickly here. I can kind of just give it a little fluff a little fluff to get all that wet paint moved around. So yeah, I'm just gonna, yeah, that's almost dry. It's not bone dry. Um, I can kind of pick it up and give it a little shaky shake. If you, if you find that you've got a lot of paint on there and it's really wet, um, I recommend trying to like really move that, that, um, paint around, um, taking some of that paint off with your brush or and once you've done that you can put it under the hair dryer that works really well you can wave it around well, that kind of makes a cool sound like a helicopter or something um so yeah and if you're using watercolor uh you're you should wait till that's pretty dry too um but it if you're using watercolor it doesn't it, we don't have to worry too much about it being super dry so I'm just going to take one more minute, just in case anyone needs to catch up. I keep, I keep testing it carefully with my hand. It's not quite at the, the scratch test. The scratch test is when it's bone dry and you can wipe your hands on it and it makes a scratchy noise. So we're almost there. I'll hang out a bit and let everybody catch up. And actually, I can explain what we're going to do next. So for this, for this wash... Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to start building up these greens in the back, okay? And what's great with starting out on the yellow is that I can add greens and blues on top of that yellow, and they're going to look green. And I can add reds on top of here, and they're going to look orange. So starting out with that yellow base is really helpful for us. So... Um, and by the way, I have that yellow paint on my brush still. I don't need to wash that off cuz we're going to be we're going to be mixing some green and I need yellow to make green. You might have straight green paint already, so you can use that. That's fine. Um I don't have my green paint out today. I just have my yellow and kiddos out there, what do I need to add to yellow to make green? Just shout it out. 1 2 3. That's right. We need to add this blue. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing next. I'm going to kind of wave, wave my canvas here to get some fan action going, get this dry. Ooh, we are almost, we're almost at the scratch test. Yes, Anya, blue, good job. We're almost at the scratch test. That's feeling, feeling pretty good. All right, so what I'm going to do... And here's where we, we get a wash. And again, a wash is just a really watery, watery color. Like a, a watery color. Uh, it's a watercolor. <laughs> be 
basically. Okay. So I've got, I've got my brush. It already has some yellow in it and that's cool. I'm going to dip my brush in the water, get it nice and full of that H2O. And then in my plate, I'm going to start kind of pressing those bristles in there. Okay, and I still, I had some blue in there to begin with earlier, so I'm already kind of going green. Um, but I'm going to tap into my blue paint, and I might even add some more water. Okay. And this is my wash. It's a really watered-down acrylic. Um, it's a watercolor, basically. Right? Okay. And when you first play with this on your yellow canvas, you're going to learn if you've got too much water or not enough. And honestly, it's totally up to you. Um, the general rule is you can start light and always add color. It, it becomes harder to take the color away. Um, that's kind of a general rule. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to outline my um, butterfly. So if we look at the original again, we see that my butterfly is, we're really close up. We're so close up that I, I kind of clipped off her wing at the top here. So we can imagine that her wing extends up there. Okay. So I'm going to first outline this upper wing. Okay. And I'm not going to complete it. I'm not going to go all the way in, right? I'm just going to keep this outside line here and this outside line here. Okay, if you happen to accidentally go all the way in, that's fine, but I'm just gonna keep it um, the outside edges here. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. I have my green wash, and let's see, her wing for me goes there. I'm gonna imagine it coming out the top and then curving back around this way, something like that. And then I've got her top wing. Now I can add her bottom wing. And for me, her bottom wing is more roundish. So the top wing is kind of more like a fin or a sail on a boat. Okay. And then her, her bottom wing is more rounded. Okay. So that's, that's how I'm going to do my butterfly. So I got that top wing and now I'm going to give her the bottom something like that and that's my guide for my butterfly and what I'm gonna do next you can see I've got a lot of, of wet here for my wash and that's fine I'm gonna take advantage of that and I'm gonna start pulling it out and away from our butterfly and you might notice that the wash is kind of removing some some of your yellow and that's totally fine no worries so with, with my green wash, I'm going to start putting in this background, okay? And I'm using, I'm using vertical strokes, so up and down. I'm going to be using up and down strokes because our, ooh, or upside down, because our background is grass and, and plants and things. So I want to, I want to keep my brush strokes nice and vertical and up and down. And I'm going to give my first layer of this wash. So I went, I went back into my plate here. I'm loading up my brush with, um, I don't have a lot of wash left in there, but I'm loading my brush up and, oh, oh my cat just walked behind me. <laughs> Hi, Willie. All right. So I'm just going to use these up and down strokes to fill in the background and I'm leaving her wings alone, right? I want to keep her wings yellow. I need more wash, so I'm just going to dip my brush into my water here and press press down on my plate. I'm going to tap into some yellow, tap into some blue and get some more color going. What's what's great about these wash these washes is you don't need a lot of paint, right? If you're kind of getting low on paint lately, you can 
totally make the paint last longer by turning it into a watercolor. All right. And again, don't don't worry if your wash is kind of cleaning cleaning off your canvas. That's totally fine. In fact, it's kind of neat to see like the little different textures and colors that kind of come out of this. Okay, so that's that's basically my first my first layer of wash, right? So now I want to go in and make a darker wash. Okay, so for me, that means I'm going to add more blue this time. So just more blue to yellow in our ratio. Okay. And then with this wash, I can add different lines and textures. And really, as long as we're keeping these vertical strokes, we really can't go wrong, right? Because we're just going to be creating these fun little textures and shadows and highlights, right? Isn't that cool? All right. I don't know. I've got a feeling that you guys are doing awesome right now. Oh, yes, you are. You are. I miss I miss seeing you guys so much um, with my nights at the arena and State College for Cheers to Art, all of my private events that got canceled. I miss seeing artists face-to-face uh, -face and seeing their work. Um, it, it, really, it really is very joyful to watch people create art. Um, just looking at myself do art, it's, it's, it's just not the same. I, I really enjoy watching people make art, so um, I can imagine it in, in my brain, in my imagination. And, and then um, I, love, I love when you guys share your paintings with me at the end. It, it's so cool to see um, all of your paintings, to see all the different kinds of things that people came up with. Everything always looks a little different. It's so cool. I love it. So yeah, make sure you share your, your paintings um, at the end, uh, in the comment section. Some people text them to me or message them to me, but we love, love, love looking at those, those paintings. They, they bring us such joy these days. Okay, so you can see how just kind of playing around with these little brush strokes, we start creating like little grasses and things. Really cool. I'm going to actually make another wash. It's going to be even darker. And here's where we got to be a little careful. So I'm back into my, my wash here, but I'm going to add a little teeny, teeny, teeny bit of black, the smidgiest of smooches, the smidgiest of smidges into my black, into my green wash. And really, really, I highly recommend giving it a, a test on um, your tablecloth because a little black goes a long way and we don't want, we don't want to create um, black grass. That would be kind of weird. All right, so now I've got this darker wash happening and I'm going to just add those to the bottom here. And well, anywhere really. And that, that I was really, really careful there. It wasn't terribly dark at all. So I might, I might add more paint to water ratio here. So yeah, if you're finding that your washes just aren't standing out, you might need to um, up the paint ratio. In other words, just add more paint than water or just play with you know how much paint and water you have. There we go, and I can get a bit more of that showing up. So now I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna now start playing with more acrylic than watercolor. So just more paint. I'm going to grab a touch of that black again. 
So now this is pretty much a traditional acrylic, not a lot of water in there at all. In fact, hardly any. And I can start, <gasps> oh, I was waiting for that to happen. <laughs> I just knocked over my cup of water. It's fine. I caught it, but it, I still got a little sprinkly here. Um, but we are good. All right. Ooh, yeah. So then when you get more of that, oh, my cat's like, what did you do? Hi. You want to say hi to everyone? Let's see if we can get you on camera. Oh, hi. You want to be in my lap now, huh? This is Willie. Oh, <laughs> she, she did not like that. Okay. So we are, we are doing okay. I'm a little, I'm a little wet on my jeans, but we, we will, we will get through this. All right, I'm going to I'm going to make some more of that just straight acrylic. Add a little smidgy smooch of black. And I'm going to start really get ooh yeah, getting in some of these different kinds of textures and leaves and stems and what have you. Cool. All right. How we doing, folks? I hope you enjoy this technique and you can you can play with this um on your own by starting with so we started with yellow. Um but you can start a base with um Cheryl says hi, Willie. Um you can start a base with uh, pretty much any color, but yellow yellow works really well because it's bright and light. Um, but you could practice starting with like a light blue background, letting that dry and seeing what kind of washes work on top of a light blue. Um, so it's, it's kind of a fun thing to, to play around with, especially when you're getting low on paint. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I, I'm going to move away from our grass right now and I'm going to start playing with our butterfly. So I do want to wipe off my brush. I want to get as much paint off as I can. Now, I swear I brought paper towel here. Here we go. So I want to wipe off as much of that paint as possible before I give it a good clean rinse. Okay. So just wiped off my brush. I'm going to give it a nice bath. All right, so now I'm gonna work on the wash for our butterfly. And our butterfly, as you might have guessed, has a wash that's made of red, right? So the red going on top of yellow will kind of give us a, a burnt kind of orangey um, effect, okay? So that's what we're gonna do now. So I just cleaned my brush, right? I'm gonna dip it in, make sure I got some water on those bristles and I'm going to take my wet brush and just touch it into some red. A little goes a long way. Let's see what we got here. Test it on my, yeah. All right. So let's, let's get that wash going. And, um, for me, I try to concentrate the color um, towards the body and get lighter as I go out. I don't know if you can tell um, that that's what I tried to do, but you can do that or you can kind of um, cover it equally all around like this, right? Give it a nice um, wet wash all over or you can kind of, you know, Keep it towards the center and work your way out like this. Again, don't worry if your wash is starting to clean off some of that yellow paint because we can always go over it. Okay. So I'm going to go in, grab some more of my red wash, maybe even tap into some yellow. And then we get 
cool wash effect over there. I'm going to grab some more red. So then if we get, ah, oh yeah, so then we get that red in there and kind of pull it out. We can kind of blend outwards. That's fun. And I'm using a very gentle touch. So now that was, that was straight red, right? Not a lot of water. Now I can grab some water here to kind of bring this, make it more of a wash. Get that blend happening. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. More vibrant, more red than I had in the original, but that's cool. It's always fun to kind of see what different things come out as we paint. Never know what a painting will look like until we're done, really, right? Bring some of that down here. So if you've gone in in your um, butterfly and you think, oh, no, I've got too much red, then maybe go back and grab some, some yellow and just kind of go over that. See if you can get a blend going. Pretty much anything you do here is going to look really cool, I promise. And um, even if you're not happy with your butterfly right now, when we put the black outlines over it, oh, it's going to look so cool. So just sit tight. Hmm. Cool. All right. It's very wet, so it's super shiny. <laughs> there we go. All right, now actually that I have um, this kind of orange in my brush, I wanna take advantage of that because if I make a green with this paint in my brush, it's gonna, it's gonna tone down that green and that's what I wanna do for my stems on my flowers. So I'm just gonna start mixing a green here. I'm actually gonna add a little smidgy smooch of red just to tone down that green yeah, something like that. And now um, our our grass and our green area should be a little bit a little bit more dry. And I'm just going to add the stems of my two flowers. So I have three flowers that we can see the petals of, right? One, two, and three. But I can only see the the stems of these two. Okay. So um, I'm just going to. Add the big stem right here and the little guy right here. And I'm going to probably need to add more paint there. So I'm going to go in, oop, just put my, my hand in my yellow paint there. Um, I'm just going to go back and mix some of that green. So blue and yellow and then I'm going to smidgey smooch some red to tone that down. Also darken it up a bit. All right, so let's add these stems here. There's one right here. Oh yeah, yeah, I like it. And then one right here. Awesome. All right. So now that I've got my stems, let's put some blossoms on these, on these flowers. So you can practice maybe on a tablecloth or a scrap piece of paper, um, how, how your petals are going to look. Um, let me, first, let me wash my brush. Um, so I can show you what I'm, I'm about to explain. So I'm just going to wipe off my excess green paint here. And give my brush a nice, good, clean rinse. All right. Dry off that, that water here. So for these flowers, these are not a wash. These are straight red paint. Okay. So 
these these flowers are vibrant and lots of color and that is just straight red acrylic paint now for me i used my um trusty old flat angled brush and that brush is really great because i can just use the tips of those bristles and pull and i get these these petal shapes so whatever brush you have maybe maybe give it a, a test on uh, scrap paper a paper plate or something like that so you can kind of see what what are my bristles going to do when I pull it across the canvas okay um, if you have a small brush like let's say this something like this you know maybe you can just drag drag it flat across the canvas and see what kind of petals you get or if you have an even smaller brush you can kind of draw each individual petal and fill it in so that's up to you but I do love me a nice old flat angled brush because it can do lots of different things for me so I'm gonna show you that right now so right here I'm just gonna go in get a lot of paint on that brush okay and then what I can do with my angled brush is I can just press it and pull it press it and pull it and I get those kind of ready-made petals and I kind of want a nice full flower so I'm going to go in at different levels and get different rows of petals here again um, if you're at home and thinking oh my gosh that she makes it look so easy really it's just it's just the brush making making it look like I know what I'm doing because this brush just works really well for those petals just pressing on them right just pressing and pulling so then when I have like this front row I'm going to kind of go in the background here and imagine those petals that are just going off into the into the background into the distance they're farther away from us something like that right we got this you can add a little more here and there and everywhere right so now I can go up and add Add this one. This one's kind of up um, at the top. It's getting cut off. We don't see all of it, but it's we can see the kind of the base of it. Whoops. There's my first row. And then I can add another little row here. Again, having the right brush is going to make your life easier. All right. I'm not going to forget this little guy. This guy is kind of off in the, the bottom left corner. We don't see his stem, but he's, he's popping in there with his blossoms. I'm just going to turn this. There we go. Something like that. All right. How are we doing? I got a feeling we are doing awesome out there and those flowers are just popping, popping off of that canvas or that paper, whatever you guys are working with. I'm going to wipe off any excess paint. Um, for me, I'm moving on to the outline of our butterfly here. So I'm using black paint, so I don't need to I don't need to wash my brush because black paint is gonna 
going to um, overpower any, any color that I have on there. I'm going to continue to use my, my big brush here, um, but you're going to use any brush that you feel good about making fine lines with. I like using my big brush and moving it back and forth in my plate and getting, a, and getting an edge there. So first, I'm going to outline the front here, okay? Even if, our, even if our wash is still a little wet, our paint is still a little wet, that's, that should be fine at this point because we're just covering in black. So I'm just going to go over that front in a smooth, I almost knocked over my cup again, but I caught it, um, in a nice smooth stroke right down the front. All right, and let's let's do the other side. And this time we can go all the way around into the body or where the body will be. Here we go. And then we can do her bottom wing. And there we go. All right. So now what we're going to do, and this is really, really kind of like my, my special trick as to how to make butterflies really look like butterflies, is for the outer edges of her wings, we're going to draw like waves. Do you see these little waves? Yeah. So we're going to kind of draw like we were drawing like an ocean or water. You know how you do like little waves and peaks like this? We're going to do that all around her wings, except for this edge here, okay? And then we're going to fill that in with black. So let me show you what I mean. So what you can do is you can take a little brush if you want, and I'm just going to draw little waves like that. Okay, and then I can just fill that in with black. And this is a real kind of simple trick to make your butterflies really look like a monarch. So again, all I did was just kind of draw those those pointy waves, okay, and then fill in black. And I have, let's see, how many points do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, six on the top wing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the bottom wing. So you can have as many as you want. You don't have to go too crazy. They don't have to be, you don't have to have a hundred of them. And now that we have those points there, those points tell us where we're gonna draw these veins in the, in the butterfly wing. Okay, so from every point, I'm gonna pull out a vein, a black line. <clears throat> so you can follow along right with me, okay? Um, so I'm gonna imagine that there's a point right up here and I'm going to pull that one up along the front of the wing and down. Okay. But for the next point, I'm going to pull it into that line that I just made. Okay. So for my second point, again, I'm not pulling all the way down, but I'm going to pull into the first line that I just did. 
like that. And then for the next point, again, I'm going to pull into that line a little bit further. But then maybe for the next one, I'm going to pull all the way down to the bottom. And then the next one, I'm going to pull into the line. And the next one, I'm going to pull into the line. <coughs> and then anywhere you have maybe a thicker portion that you want more lines, then go for it. Isn't that fun? So that's, that's my trick for, for monarch butterfly wings. You do the waves, right? You fill it in black. And then from each point, you start pulling out the, the black lines. All right, let's do the same thing on the bottom wing. So I'm gonna go from this point here and pull in towards the body. The next point, I'm gonna go into that line. And the next one, maybe I'll pull it into the body, like that. But for my next one, I'll pull into the line. And the next one, I'll pull into the line. And you just kind of play with where you want all those lines to be. And then you can add extras where you want. Fun, right? That's my easy step-by-step -step monarch butterfly. You got those wings outlined, then you do those waves, and from each point, you get to pull in a vein there. Cool. All right, let's let's give this butterfly um, a body. How about that? So, kiddos out there, what are the three parts to an insect? First, we have the head, and then what do we have? The thorax, right? And then the abdomen. So head, thorax, abdomen. So I'm going to start with the thorax, and that's like right right on our wings here. I can give her a little head. And then her abdomen. So in my in my original she was more si sitting on the flower and right now I guess she's just about to take off or land and that's totally fine. I can also give her antenna, maybe some legs, I think she has six of them, right? Maybe you can't see them all though. Awesome. All right, we just have two more details here and then, and then we can be done with this one, okay? So, if you want, I'm going to show you how to add these little um, white details on her wing. And all I do there is I've got my, my big brush with a round end, and I'm just going to tap into, into my white paint. And I just kind of smudge on little, little splotches. And, I, and I'm doing them in those waves. Remember the waves we did with those points? Where that, that's where these little dots are going to live. There's one for each wave. And just kind of smudge that around. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect circles here. There we go. Just a little, little smudgy, stampy stamp. Something like that. Fun, right? All right.
right, guys. We are almost done with it. This was a fun one, but we're, we're almost done. We're not quite finished. I'm going to show you how to add the yellow, um, I think it's called stamens, where the pollen would be in a flower. So those, those fun little guys right there. Okay. So by now, our, our red flowers should be pretty much not completely dry, but a dry enough that we can we can start working on the top of them. And I'm just going to start throwing brushes and things all over the place. <laughs> okay, where is that brush that I wanted? Are you over here? Here you are. Oh, my cat has just taken up. Um, she's right behind me. Super cute. Okay. So, um... For this one, I used a smaller, flat, but angled brush. That's going to be um, the easiest thing to use at this point, or at least to show you how I did it. So with the very tip of that brush, I dip into white, excuse me, I dip into yellow, and I can start stamping in these little stamen. And they're just these, you know, pointy things. coming out the center of our flowers here. And then they can get a little yellow dot at the top. Like that. It's a really quick, easy way to do little flower stamens. Okay, so I can't, I can't see the stamens up here in this flower, but I can see them in my little guy that's hanging out over here. So I'm just going to stamp on those little skinny parts, technical terms, and use the back end to give them little dots. And that's one way to do some stamen on some flowers. Cool! What do you think, guys? So we did a lot of, a lot of different things today. We, we practiced a, a wash technique, starting with a dry colored background of yellow and adding different washes of green to get our grasses and our stems and things. And then we did some wash in red over our butterfly. We went over the, the butterfly um, trick to make those wings look super cool. We did um, petals with a brush. We did a lot of cool things here. I cannot wait to see photos of your paintings. So please, please post them in the comments when you're all done here. Uh, also, as I mentioned earlier, I will, um, once I uh, shut down the video and wrap up, I will post in the comments the link to um, my YouTube playlist. I've created a YouTube playlist where I'm just uploading all the videos that I've been doing and have done with the Jana Marie Foundation during these weeks of being at home. And also the, so the videos for Jan and Marie Foundation that are done on Thursdays are up there. And also my videos that I've been doing on my own Facebook page, Paint with Jackie, they're also up there. So I'll post that when I'm all done here. Again, thanks for any new folks that have joined us for the first time. I hope you enjoyed painting along. I hope you got some color in your day, especially if you're in central Pennsylvania and you got a little snow today. Hopefully this uh, brought a little color and fun to your day today. Please check out the Jana Marie Foundation pay, uh, webpage, janamariefoundation.org. If you want to send them a couple of dollars as a thank you for doing all these awesome uh, videos and wellness breaks. And again, just thank you so much for being here painting with me. Uh, I look forward to it every week. Um, it's been crazy these past few weeks. We're in very, very weird times, but I'm, I get joy from, from painting along with you guys and from seeing all of your artwork. So again, thanks for being here. My name is Jackie from Paint with Jackie, and I'll see you next time.